Hi everybody, it's Heidi the Vegan Crafter coming to you from the nip wall today. If I was a proper vegan, I'd have a uh, mandala tapestry behind me, but unfortunately I don't have one of those. My daughter has a very pretty one, but she's currently got my son holed up in that room. Anyway, I'm drinking Darjeeling and I know everybody's thinking about a drunk, you know, Buzz Lightyear when they hear that. That's what I do. Anyway, please excuse the protrusion and try not to stare at it. Eyes up here. Anyway, so let's just get on into it. The first finished object I have today are socks. Big surprise. So here we go. These socks are made out of Premier Yarns Wool Free Sock Stripes in Phoenix. They are for my daughter because she like gets all the socks. I'll start a pair for me. She'll look at them and be like, mom. And you know, I always end up making them for her. So there's the first pair. The second pair is of course for her again in Berry Bush. And I made these on my Chow Goose, my number ones. And I do just a plain vanilla sock. And no, I don't match the stripes on my sock. I think these are the closest striping match thing I've ever had. And that was purely by chance. But, they, you know, they're, they're not matching. They're not matching, matching. But anyway, she likes them and that's what's important. And I can wash them and she can have them. The next thing I did was a corner to corner. I've never done a corner to corner before. So um, I use, let's see, what's her name? Susan Carlson on Ravelry. She has her spring into summer blanket where she uses, I believe she uses a mandala, but I'm not 100%. Anyway, she has a really good tutorial on, um, picture tutorial on how to do a corner to corner. So. What I used was Lion Brand Mandala Gnome. I didn't follow her pattern. Um, she, I think she only used one mandala. I, I don't know. I could be talking out, you know. But um, I used three, and I did not do a border because I'm lazy. Anyway, so here it is. Here it is, and it has not been washed. Around. Nothing has been washed, so, you know, it all looks a little bit funky dunky. But anyway. So there's that, that one. That was really fun to do. I really like corner to corner because, you know, by the time you get to the middle, you're ready to be done. So everything is, is goes much quicker after the middle because, you know, you're decreasing every row. So it goes a lot quicker. So I like making blankets corner to corner. I will be making more. I don't know if I'll ever do a Grafkin, but, I mean, that's certainly in the realm of possibility now. Um, I also made a hat for my husband out of Anna's Choice uh, Dark Heather Gray, but he's got that in the mountains right now where he is welding. I miss him. But anyway. Um, the next thing I did was I made a dress that is going to actually go on a stuffed animal. I know. I have, you know. So um, it's uh, my cousin's granddaughter. Um is going to be getting this she's I, I think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna do a bunny this time I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put this on a bear if I can find the right bear but anyway this is the dress so what I did was of course I did it you know with my favorite G but I shortened the skirt because it is going to go on a I'm looking over here so I can see the screen but um I shortened the skirt so that um it'll look okay on a stuffed animal and also this was a uh, pattern is um, butterfly kisses um, on the patternparadise.com they had a butterfly here and I just decided to do a flower because I like the idea of putting a flower there but anyway so that's a cute little dress and the peach color I am not sure of the name of it it's it's I love this yarn and it's some kind of it's it was a scrap I had but the bottom was I love this yarn um, sun, in sunset um, was this bottom color okay, so there's that um, I also did uh, a granny 
shawl. Um, and I used uh, the beginning part of it from um, Fiber Spider. Fiber Spider. He's got a um, he's got a granny shawl on there, and I like the way he started his, so that's how I started mine. But the rest of it is just from my brains. So um, it starts out very black, and then I have a big color stripe, la 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 la, and then I did a um, simple scalloped edge, and then I did um, a uh, what did I do? And then I did a single um, crochet along the, the top edge to clean it up. And I will show you how big it is on my uh, my daughter. I think my daughter will be using this one. And let's see. Anyway, it's a really nice size on her. Um, so yeah, so there's that. My granny, I've been like crocheting all the things. Because I spent most of this last year just knitting a ton. And I just, you know, I, I've only been knitting for a little over a year now. But I've crocheted for 34. And so I, I really miss crocheting. So I, I did. I crocheted a lot of stuff this last time because I was just really missing it. Um, And I also worked on a few squares. I had put it aside for a long time because I was like, this is going to take me forever. Why start the squares now? But what I did was, let's see, which ones have I done? These ones. I did four. What I'm doing is I'm doing a memory sock blanket. So where um, every square on the blanket is going to be um, the remnants of the sock yarn I used for a pair of socks. And then I'm going to do it in chronological order. So here is another square. And the reason why they're not joined yet is because I am doing, well, now they're out of order. No, maybe. Yes, maybe. I put them out of order. Uh, I'll go back on Instagram and look. But anyway, there's another one. There's a purple one. And then I think I did the green ones next. The green one. And then the purple. And all of these are made from um, Premier Yarns um, Wolfrey Sock Yarn. I love that sock yarn. Um, it has um, PBT in it, and it's acrylic, and um, it just really forms to your feet. And when you're working on it, it feels a little bit rough, but when you wash it, it is so soft. Um, but anyway, so so what I, I the version I'm doing of that blanket is Zoe Knit. It's called Zoe Knit Girl's version of the sock yarn blanket. And she doesn't s simply put the, you know, the square on top of each other so that you, you know what I mean? Um, it is actually, see if you can see this picture. They're actually set on point. And so you do do this, and this is free, by the way, on Ravelry. Um, you do the um, bottom row, which is, I believe, 17 across. And then you, you come back and you um, start knitting together the second row. And from then on, you knit them together. So just coming up with 17 pairs of socks uh, for one row. You know, this year I only did 12 pairs of socks. So I'm 46, so I would never finish this blanket if, that's, if that was the case. So what I decided to do, and this was my only purchase. I know, I'm going through withdrawals. This is my only purchase was I bought four skeins of the Premier Yarn Wolfrey Sock in black. And what I'm gonna do is every other one, I'm gonna do a black mitered square. And I think it'll tie the blanket together, A, and B, it's great filler, so that maybe before I die, I can actually get this blanket done. That is that is my hope and my wish and my fondest dream. Um, and so yeah, so that's what I will be doing. So I have enough now then to, um, start my my actually into my second row so I'll actually start to be able to join them together which is exciting so anyway like I said that was my only purchase I don't know what I'm going to do my husband's not even in town I might have to remedy that no anyway okay so on to whips 
so my whips I've had for a while because I just set them aside and started doing other things. But my first whip is, um, my daughter is very much a boho kind of person and she loves boho purses. And so I have, um, I'm making her a purse. I've only do the first panel. It's so quick and I just stopped. I don't know why, but I did. I just stopped up to the first panel. So, um, I did the first panel of her purse that I'm making her. This is, um, Dania's crochet wheel lattice pattern um, online. You can just Google it. Um, I don't think it's on Ravelry. I I didn't see it. On, I found it on after a Google search, and it is made with I love this yarn cotton. So it's not I love this yarn. I love this cotton, um, in Harvest. Anyway, very pretty. Very much like it, and um, so I will. I I have to get going on that. She's and asking about that. And it is living in my rain barrel design bag. You really need to go check her out. She's awesome. The next thing I have been making is actually knit. And it, I am using a Lion Brand Mandala. And I want to say that it is in spirit. I think that's the, the name of it is spirit, but I am not sure because I have lost my ball band. So anyway, here it is. And it's on my towels. Um, yeah, I, I, I rarely use my straight needles anymore. Number one, because you know what my husband did with them. And number two is because, you know, I just love my chow goose anyway. So, um, it's this pretty, really pretty lace pattern. And I don't know if you can, See, it's a really pretty lace pattern, and um, that is called, and it's on Ravelry. It's a free one on Ravelry. It's the Lagoon Pond Scarf by Jennifer A. Myers, M-E-Y-E-R-S. It's a uh, six-row repeat. It's very easy to remember, um, and... I really like it. It's fun. I, I, I do, I try to do at least four repeats when I work on it before I go to something else. Um, I'm trying not to get bored on it. So that's why I only do that much. So, um, cause I get bored really easy on repetitive project projects. I don't know why I do. Maybe I'm just a product and not a project kind of person. I don't know. But I really do like the rhythm of just just knitting. It's just sometimes, you know, just it bores me. I don't know. I don't know. I have a jalapeno hangover right now. Until today, I would not have thought that that was a real thing. Let me make sure we're still recording because, you know, that's happened before. And it is so hot. It is so hot. Uh, it's 60 four in my house and I'm sweating like unreal it's totally cosmic unfair anyway the next thing I am working on is a shawl what did I do did it with it oh that's over I love this one this one's for me my daughter hoped it was for her but I'm making it exceptionally large because I find it to be a, a socially acceptable form of wearing a blanket as wearing a shawl. Not that I will ever wear one, but I figure in my old age I might. My older age I might. Anyway, it starts out, well, let's see. Yeah, it starts out black. And then it goes to the color pattern. It is not done, of course. But that's the colors on the striped. So. It's a lot like the other one, except I'm doing like, um, I want to say 15, 15 more rows than the other one. I have, uh, two more rows of the black on the bottom to do, and then the scallop border. That's it. And you know, to do the ends and it'll be done. So it'll be done today, but I think it's about 15 more. I'm not sure. But anyway. So I love those colors together, you know, on the black one. And what I am using, those colors are, of course, 
the I Love This Yarn Black. Let's see. Uh, I believe the, the orange, the first orange, the first orange I know is, is um, Crafter's Secret. It's the, the inexpensive brand from Hobby Lobby. And I think this is that orange. And then this is called I Love This Yarn Orange. So they're both actually orange, but they're, you know. Um, and then this one is the Hot Rose, and this is the Amethyst um, in I, Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. Um, I've also finally sewed my pillows together, but they have not been stuffed or anything. And when I was sewing them up, I didn't even notice until after I sewed up the, the fabric that there's a hole in the middle of one of the pillows. So I'm getting a patch for that and I'll patch it up and then I'll put it together. All right. So I want to do some shout outs, um, today because, um, there's a lot of people that I watch and, um, I think they deserve to be known. Well, a lot of them are known, but I intend to start doing that more is to sharing more people. The first one I watch is Nairobi and it's N A I R O B I. Um, I recently came across her, um, channel and she does, um, journaling and crochet. I think she does crochet. Um, and she does, um, uh, art journals and things like that. She just, it's just beautiful the stuff she puts together my favorite video she does is the hundred days project um, where she shows her collages um, for the days they're very pretty I, I really just she's just very creative and I, and I, I love it um, the next one is I, I have discovered is hand-me-downs it's hand-me-downs and I'm so sorry I was gonna look it up but it's I think it's hand-me-downs crochet and knits or hand me downs knit and crochet or something like that anyway but it's spelled hand me downs is spelled with a z um instead of you know an s um and he is a a former benedictine monk and um he is is um he's very proper you know he's so proper he uses words like schedule and words of fedora but he is um highly intelligent and um at the end of his um vlog or podcast whatever he usually goes into some subject that's interesting him and a lot of times it's religion because you know like i say he used to be a a former monk and um he uh a lot of things i don't you know different of opinion but i he makes you really enjoy listening to his different opinion you know what I mean? So I find him very charming and I like to watch his podcast. And I don't know if they're podcasts or vlogs. You know, somebody needs to correct me. Probably my sister. But somebody needs to correct me on what the heck you call these things. Anyway. Um, the next one is Crafting Vicky. She is amazed beans at her um, art journaling, bullet journaling, all those kinds of things she does. Um collages and cards and it just I really enjoy watching her then there is Carla Frizzell and it's it's Carla with a K and Frizzell is spelled F-R-I-Z-Z-E-L-L-E -L -L -E. um, she does um, junk journals that are absolutely beautiful just she's very talented the next person I watch is David Howard and he um, is in the doll community and I am not in the doll community but let me tell you I find it fascinating. So I watch him. Out of all the ones that I've seen, I really enjoy watching him because he gives a lot of insights into why people like that hobby and the ins and outs of that hobby and the, the drawbacks and the um, positives. And I just enjoy watching him. I just turn him on and I knit. So I like watching him. The next one is Vegan Pixie. Um, she is... Um, Currently, she's doing um, what slim like Slimming World um, for vegans, and so I just like watching her and seeing her progress. She's she's a fun girl to watch. And then the last one is um, it's a relatively new podcast. She 
um, used to have another one, but then she's restarted it and it's the yarn nerd podcast. And, um, um, I like listening to her too. So I've only watched it. I watched about half of her videos. I think she's only got like six up right now, but I think I've watched like three. Um, and I really enjoy them. So there you go. Oh, there's the shout outs, the shout outs and the patterns, um, will be in the description box below, but nothing else will because I can't be bothered. Um, anyway, so, um, I would like to do a Q and A, um, because I keep getting, you know, I get a lot of random questions. And so what I would like to do is over the next couple of videos, compile your questions, anything you'd like to ask me, and then I will do a Q and A video, uh, in a couple times. Um, just because I know I will get the question, if I was on a deserted island, would I eat meat? Um, it always, always comes up. And here's the answer. I'll give you the answer now. No. And the reason being is because if I was on a deserted island and all was me and animals, there obviously is enough plant life to support the animals so that I could eat the plant. There's surely some human edible things there for me to eat. Okay. And then the next question will be, well, what if there isn't? What if there is only, you know, animals there? Well, if there's only animals there, the only animals that would still be alive, because you have to have the producers, people. The only animals that would be alive would be the carnivores, which, you know, wouldn't happen. But if it did in your world, um, I would just be dead because they would be so hungry and I would not be able to fend them off. I would just be dead. They would be eating me. That's just the way it is. You know, or you get the question, what about if, you know, the apocalypse happens and you have to be holed up in your house? Would you eat meat then? Well, here's the thing. If there is an apocalypse, let's say a zombie apocalypse, because, you know, obviously you live in that world, um, I would be dead too. Because here's the thing. If you watch movies and TV shows, the very fit people can't run, outrun the zombies. <laughs> Do you really think I can? I mean, the first zombie would like, ah, I'd be like, Thanksgiving dinner, go ahead, enjoy. So anyway, I always get those questions. Not kidding. Not kidding. So if you have any other questions, go ahead, leave them below. Leave them on my Instagram, which is the underscore vegan underscore crafter. And I will be happy to answer them in an upcoming episode. Anyway, so life. The weather has been up and down so much that my body just doesn't know what's happening. It doesn't know what's happening. Like, I keep thinking it's supposed to be hot outside when it's cold, and I keep thinking it's supposed to be cold outside when it's hot. It's very confusing. But anyway, today it's supposed to be in the 80s, and in two days it's going to be in the 40s. I'll tell you what, Mother Nature, she's going through the change too. Anyway. I'm happy because school is almost over. I homeschool. My daughter, like most kids, once Christmas hits, they're done with school. And she is absolutely, like, done. D-O-N-E, done. And so it is just like pulling teeth to get her to finish. Anyway, it's only a few more weeks. We're done. She's in high school, and that's almost done. And then I have my other one going to be starting. But anyway, um, what else? My husband's gone for a little bit. We miss him very much. But he's, you know, off doing the, making the money for the family thing. And um, so we'll seize him when we seize him. Other than that, not much a lot. Yeah, not much going on. So I'll go ahead and end with a quote because let's see how long we did. I don't know how long we did. It's not keeping track. What's up with that? Anyway, so I will leave you with a quote. Finally, this time. Twice, I think I haven't. But anyway, so this quote is by Alexander Den 
Hygier. I don't know how. Okay. I don't. I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay. It's H-E-I-J-E-R. Hygier? I don't know. Anyway. Alexander Den Hyger. I'm sorry I butchered the name. Is when a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. So anyway, that's my quote for the day, my thought for the day. So if you're not blooming, fix your environment. Not you, because you're the flower. Anyway, I've said anyway like nine times. Anyway. So I hope you guys are enjoying your spring or autumn, depending on which hemisphere you are in. And I will hopefully catch you guys within four weeks, but that does not seem to be my track record. But anyway, adios. Bye-bye.